Welcome to Tech Tips Tuesday. In this episode, we're going to talk about an issue that vacuum tube manufacturers seem to not want to address, or at least they want to sweep it under the rug, and that issue is, or can be called, filament flash or heater flash. At least that's what we called it back in the day, and I'll touch on that story here just quite shortly. So I've been online doing some research, trying to find some forums that might talk about this with consumer grade vacuum tubes, and I managed to find a couple of topics, but the people in the forums pretty much say the exact same thing that the vacuum tube manufacturer says, and that's pretty much just watch it flash and deal with the lifespan. Which brings me to my story. Way back in the day, I worked for a large company, Reverse Engineering Devices, and the company bought some pallets of large vacuum tubes for what we were doing at the time. And these vacuum tubes were failing prematurely due to filament flash. They're failing in numbers. So I called up the vacuum tube manufacturer and got passed from engineer to engineer to engineer right down to the building level. And if I can remember correctly, at the building level, they said, as long as you run the vacuum tube within parameters, you should achieve the specified lifespan. I think that was pretty much the exact thing that they said, the exact wording or very, very close to anyways. Of course, we knew this was absolute BS because our tubes were failing in numbers. So I designed a device in order to eliminate heater flash for those large tubes. And that's exactly what I'm going to do here is design a small one for these smaller uh, Telefunken, Mullard and um, Amperex style vacuum tubes. Now I noticed that uh, it's basically all the European vacuum tubes that really have this heater flash. Most of the North American ones don't seem to exhibit this issue. So when I'm talking about the, uh, the uh, uh, European tubes, I'm talking about the ECC 83, 81, 88, and those type tubes. And again, they're the, you know, Muller, Telefunken, and uh, Amperex style tubes. So I'm going to show you a bunch of workarounds and a few circuits in order to stop this from happening so you can prolong the life of your very expensive tubes. So let's get right into the video. For those of you that are not familiar with vacuum tube filament flash or heater flash, I'll give you a quick example before I get going in this video. The tube you see on your screen is a 12AU7, it's made in Holland and it's branded Rogers on the side of the vacuum tube. This vacuum tube is a very interesting example of filament flash, and when I say interesting example, the 12AU7 has two triodes inside it, so effectively it's two tubes in one. Now, since it's two triodes in one glass case, it has two separate filament structures. One of the filament structures inside this vacuum tube has very bad filament flash, and the other filament structure has absolutely none, indicating a manufacturing defect. Now, this basing diagram for this tube allows us to run the filaments in this tube in series, in parallel, or I can run each filament independent of the other. So I can light up one triode section and leave the other one dark or vice versa. And that's how I have it set up in my test fixture here. On the test fixture, you'll see a little red LED here. This little red LED is really dim and I wanted it to be that way so that you can just see a faint red glow when I press the button on my test fixture in order to light either of the filaments. That just gives you an idea of when I've pressed the button. So when the red LED comes on, there's power to the filaments, either one inside of this vacuum tube. All right, so I'll give you an example of filament flash. The first triode here is the one with a really bad filament flash, this one right here. If you look straight through these two filament leads, you'll see two other filament leads on the far side of the vacuum tube. And those are the second triode's filaments right there. So what I'm gonna do is press the button and keep an eye on this little section right here. This is where the filament flash is going to occur. And this is what's not supposed to happen in vacuum tubes. So here we go. So you can see when the filament is cold, the tungsten wire is not pulling current equally and we get a hot spot in that filament. So we all know where that filament is going to open up one day. All right, so I'll let off the switch here. I'll let that filament cool down. Now we'll take a look at the far side filament, the one that if you look straight through the center of that one, you'll see the filament there. That filament has absolutely no heater flash and is running the way a vacuum tube filament should run. So here we go, I'll press the button and just keep an eye on that filament in the far side. And that's how a vacuum tube filament should light up. There should be no hot spots or no bright spots like that whatsoever. So in this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on a solution to slowing this problem down here so that we can prolong the life 
of your very expensive vacuum tubes. This is the test fixture that I've put together for this demonstration. This is an old paging switch that I found in a box, works really nicely. Two rugged switches inside here, they're normally open, single pole, single throw switches. So really they're just a standard push button switch, so you push it and it closes two contacts inside. So this is to light up one trout and this is to light up the other trout, or if I wanted to light them both up, I just put my finger in the middle. So this was a nice easy solution. It was already put together, I just had to put some wires in it and away I went. This is a three inch pipe cap. And this pipe cap is a hole drilled in the center for a nine pin tube socket, and that's where the little LED is. And on the bottom side is a uh, filter capacitor for the uh, trigger line. Here we can see a one ohm resistor that we're going to be taking current measurement across. And in some heat shrink tubing down here, there's some diodes and stuff like that. And I'll show you that on a schematic in just a moment. On the back side here, I've got a terminal tie strip where I tie my scope probe into for that current reading. And this is also a external trigger here so that when I press the button, it triggers the oscilloscope. And that's really all that that is. Just that simple. So I'll move this out of the way and I've got the schematic right here. So this is fed with direct current so I can get nice clean readings on the oscilloscope. Goes through that switch that I showed you. These two switches right here are these switches right here. That runs into pin four and five of the tube socket. Pin nine runs out through that one ohm resistor to ground and this is what we're going to be reading the current across. There's two diodes also on this side of the switch that run down through a light emitting diode and through a 560 ohm resistor to ground. The reason that the diodes are here is so that the switches don't see each other and it's just no matter which one I press it lights up that little LED so you can see when I've pushed the switch because usually you know the, the switch is outside the shot. There's a 560 ohm resistor on the trigger line right here and the only reason that resistor is there is because it was laying on the bench beside this one and it is also just a acting as a current protection or current limiting for these diodes just in case I short the trigger line to ground by accident or something like that. And that's all that that's there for. This capacitor right here is just here for, to filter the trigger line so to keep any noise off it so I don't get any false triggering. You'll notice the capacitor is on this side of the resistor. If it was on this side of the resistor I would have a trigger delay and I don't want that. So it's just across the uh, LED here really is what it is. And that's just how simple this is. So press this switch, this half of the filament lights up. Press this switch, this half of the filament lights up. And we can take our measurements here. Each filament inside this 12AU7 vacuum tube draws 150 milliamps each. So if I hook both of those filaments in parallel, I get a 300 milliamp draw at 6.3 volts. I'm only going to be powering up one filament at a time, and I have an oscilloscope across a 1 ohm resistor in the filament line, so the readings that we see on the oscilloscope can be turned from millivolts into milliamps. So if we hit 1 volt on the oscilloscope screen, that would be 1 amp of current. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply power to one filament inside this 12AU7. Let's apply it to the flashy side first and let's check out what we get on the oscilloscope screen. So here we go. With that tube in there I pretty much don't even need that little red LED. So here we have it. That's our current consumption right now. Now you see where that little T is at the top of the screen right here. That's when I'm pushing the switch on. So really that's when the filament is cold right there and as the filament is warming up it's coming down here and we can see it settling off under 200 milliamps. So what that means is when the tungsten filament is cold it's drawing a lot more current and that's just because the tungsten is cold and that's how tungsten filaments work. As they warm up they draw less current. This could bring us into many topics about how mass airflow sensors work and everything like that. But this is, this is the, uh, the nature of the beast with tungsten. So you can see it's just under 200 milliamps at this end of the screen here. If I was to you know, hold the button down longer or you know, um, have a longer display on there, uh, we would see that it would settle off at around 150 milliamps. So since that piece of you know, tungsten in there is so cold, you can see that when we first apply power to it, it's drawing very heavy current. And then as it's warming up, you can see it come down and slowly settle off. So just think if you had a radio with, say, 20 vacuum tubes in it and you first turn it on. Think of the instantaneous current consumption until those filaments warm up. 
And that's really what we're dealing with in this vacuum tube. And what you see on the screen is giving us our solution to slowing down this heater flash or this uh, filament flash that we have inside this vacuum tube. And I will explain that next. Eliminating heater flash in these smaller vacuum tubes is really quite simple. All it requires is a resistor and a switch. So if you want to save your vacuum tubes, your Mullards or your you know, Telefunken or like vacuum tubes in your amplifier, all you need to do is install a resistor and a switch on the filaments. So what we saw on the oscilloscope earlier, we see that when the tungsten filament is cold, it draws very heavy current for a very short period of time. But once it warms up, we can see that the current just comes right down, right to almost resting to where it should be within that short period of time that we had on the oscilloscope there. So what I'm going to do is I only have one filament hooked up here again, and this is the very flashy side of this um, 12AU7 again. And what I'm going to do is I'm just with this one filament. Now remember, I'm not powering up both sides. I'm just powering up one. I have a 27 ohm 2 watt metal film resistor here. And I'm going to turn the light and I'm just going to put this resistor in line and preheat the tube a little bit for maybe 10 to 15 seconds. Okay. So I move the light here. You can keep an eye on this LED and you'll see that it'll come on really dim. So I'm not pushing the switch. Really what I do is I just have a resistor across this switch right now. So here I go. Now watch the filament on the tube. Okay. This is the really flashy side. Now you can see I have the resistor in line and you can see, see how that LED is slowly starting to come up? That's because the filament is warming up inside that vacuum tube right now. So the current draw is now a lot less. You can see how it's getting brighter and brighter and brighter. As that LED gets brighter and brighter and brighter, the current draw is going lower and lower and lower because that tungsten is getting warm. Now, you saw absolutely no filament flash there whatsoever with this 27 ohm resistor on one side. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push the button and apply full filament voltage now and watch the vacuum tube. Here we go. Bingo, no filament flash. And that's how easy it is to save your very expensive tubes. All you need to do is just add a resistor and a switch. That's the simplest solution. There's a few other ones that you can do too that are a little bit harder if you want to make this automated. And I'll just set the camera up and show you a couple of schematics right now. Here are two very simple solutions to help stop filament flash in your piece of equipment. Now, this is the one that I just demonstrated, and it works very, very well, as you see in the last shot. And this will work on an AC or a DC filament system. This one here will only work on a DC filament string. And this one here is automated, and I'll touch on that in just a moment. So this is as easy as it gets. All you really do is just remove one of the filament wires from the pins on the bottom of the tube socket, and put a resistor in line with it, and a switch across that resistor. So the switch is open before you turn on your amplifier. So you got to make sure the switch is, you know, not closed. When you turn on your amplifier, what happens is the voltage goes through this resistor and preheats the tube, just like you saw in the last shot. And after about 20 seconds or so, all you do is just close the switch and you've eliminated your heater flash and that's it. So now, of course, you want to make sure that the wattage of this resistor is going to deal with the current consumption of this vacuum tube. I had a 27 ohm 2 watt resistor in line with only one filament section and it got warm. So most filament systems run at 6.3 volts and the filaments are in parallel. Now, not all systems are, but a lot of them are. So the value of this resistor wouldn't be 27 ohms, it'd be much lower, more probably lower than 20 ohms, and you, get, you would have to adjust the wattage accordingly depending on the vacuum tube you're using. You want to make sure that the wattage rating of this resistor is high enough so that if you forget to close this switch, this resistor doesn't burn up on you. You want to make sure that it you know, gets gently warm under 100% duty cycle. Let's look at it like that. And that's just how simple that system is. This DC system that you see here is a little bit more complex. It uses an N-channel FET. This resistor right here is this resistor right here. 
And all that's really happening is, is when positive voltage is applied to it, what's happening is this is acting as like a timing circuit, and this FET is acting like a variable resistor. As this capacitor charges up, it's slowly turning on this FET. The FET starts to run through the linear region, and it slowly starts to short out this resistor, bringing this to ground. So it is a really smooth transition to full brightness on the vacuum tube. This works quite well. I don't have any resistance values in here, just because there's so many different filament and heater systems that it would just be almost ridiculous to put this in and of course you know you're gonna have to rate the fat to how large the, uh, the you know the current demand is on your vacuum tube and everything so one thing I can tell you is you're going to want to use a tantalum timing capacitor and you want to put this diode in here because what happens is when you shut your unit off that'll drain this cap back off into the filament line so that when you turn it on it starts through the timing cycle. Well, at least it'll be about 0.6 volts or around there again until this resistor drains this completely off. And that's really two systems to eliminate your heater flash. Let's check out this 5751. Oh, look at the starting current for that one, 992 milliamps. So just about an amp for one filament to start up. So the cold starting current for this tube would be roughly around two amps. I'll hit the other filament now. Just a little over an amp for that filament. Absolutely no heater flash. A 5751 is really close to a 12AX7, except it has a gain of 70 instead of a gain of 100. So, uh, yeah, the 5751 5 star by GE is, uh, you know, top notch stuff. Thanks for stopping by Tech Tips Tuesday. If you enjoyed this episode, you can let me know by giving me a big thumbs up and hang around. There'll be many more episodes just like this, touching on various different topics in the very near future. So, until then, bye for now.